Today I will try to make atrazine, which is a controversial herbicide that is banned in Europe. In the ground it decomposes way too slowly and can therefore get into the groundwater. When ingested it messes around with the hormonal system and can decrease testosterone production. In certain animals this effect is even more pronounced and therefore atrazine is mainly known for one thing. It is known for turning frogs gay. Do you understand that? Turn the freaking frogs gay! Serious crap! Gay! Frogs freaking frogs! It's not funny! I'm gonna say it real slow for you. Gay! I randomly remembered this funny video and looked up what chemical they were talking about. It was atrazine and I thought it would be fun to make such a weird chemical. Therefore I'm going to check if I actually have all of the chemicals. I opened my stinky amine barrel and apparently a bottle of isopropyl amine was sitting right on top of it. I also have cyanuric chloride which is another chemical that is needed. For the synthesis to work, I need anhydrous ethylamine. My stinky barrel may contain methylamine, but no ethylamine. Overpriced chemical resellers don't even have a price tag for it. This means I will have to try making it myself. Fortunately, it should be fairly easy to make from a supplement called L-theanine. Theanine looks like this. I only need to find a way to split off the ethylamine over here. Fortunately, it should be easy to make ethylamine from this. I only need sodium hydroxide. With sodium hydroxide, theanine is turned into sodium glutamate and ethylamine. These are the amounts of each chemical that are used. I began by weighing out the theanine. It made a ton of dust and you can't imagine how nasty the cleanup afterwards was. I added about 30 milliliters of dihydrogen monoxide to make a sludge. I continued by weighing out the sodium hydroxide. A little more than two equivalents were used. Enough hydrogen hydroxide to make a 50% solution was added. Ethylamine has a boiling point of 16 degrees Celsius. This means that it cannot be condensed using a normal water cooler in the raging summer heat. An ice bath, however, is ideal. I added the sodium hydroxide solution gradually over the course of about 20 minutes. I never did this before and didn't know if it would end up in a runaway reaction. It would likely be fine to just dump in the sodium hydroxide solution. In the end, the flask looked like someone took a big dump in it. And even more concerning was that I didn't collect any ethylamine. I added even more sodium hydroxide to hopefully drive the ethylamine out of solution, but without any luck. The flask smelled heavily like ethylamine, but I didn't collect any. Maybe I used too much water. If you have any idea why this fails, please let me know down in the comments. To make atrazine anyways, I went ahead and bought ethylamine hydrochloride. When combined with sodium hydroxide and heated, ethylamine is easily driven off. I weighed out 15 grams of funny caustic powder directly in this round bottom flask. The ethylamine hydrochloride was weighed out next. You have to be fairly quick while doing this as it is hygroscopic. Hygroscopic means that it will suck water out of the atmosphere. I combined the powders in this round pattern flask, put a septum on it and stuck a syringe into it. I then put in half a milliliter of distilled water to get the reaction started. Of course doing one thing is never enough. I had to start heating it using a heat gun to produce ethylamine. It also produces water, but as there's excess sodium hydroxide, the ethylamine that is driven off should be anhydrous enough. Only 20 minutes in, I already collected a decent amount of ethylamine. At some point, however, it finally stopped bubbling. So I took out the tube and closed up the specialized high pressure flask. And there you go, more or less anhydrous ethylamine. If you opened this up and took a deep whiff, you would probably die. I'm just messing with you. This is butane. Do you really think I would waste my precious ethylamine like that? I ended up with 6 grams of ethylamine. This represents a yield of 47.2%, which is not that great, but it could be worse. The time to finally make atrazine has come. These are all the required chemicals. With a syringe, I measured out the isopropyl amine first. You could also weigh it out, but I am lazy and doing it like this is much more convenient. 
Later, I got 4.1 milliliters of ethanol out of this small bottle and mixed it with the amine from before. This is the patent where I got the atrazine synthesis from. They use toluene, but I don't have toluene anymore. Therefore, I will use methyl cyclohexane instead, as it should be similar enough. Toluene looks like this, and methyl cyclohexane is extremely similar. I weighed out the cyanuric chloride in advance, because it's such a nasty compound to work with. I ended up adding more methyl cyclohexane than required, as it didn't look like a nice sludge to me. Stirring was turned on, and I added the first portion of ethanol isopropyl amine to the addition funnel. When the amine is added, a lot of heat is generated. You have to make sure to keep the temperature below 20 degrees Celsius, so a slow addition is crucial. The entire addition took me about 20 minutes, and once done, I removed this piece and put in a stopper. I then stirred for half an hour. In the meantime, I prepared a 25% solution of sodium hydroxide in distilled water. 5.4 grams of this solution were weighed out and added to the addition funnel. I put it in all at once without stirring and then let it stand for 10 minutes. Stirring was then turned back on and I stirred for 10 minutes. In this first step of the reaction, the cyanuric chloride reacts with the isopropylamine to form this thing. In the second step, I will add the ethylamine. Because of the low boiling point, I used a special addition funnel. This funnel can be cooled by passing ice water through its glass mantle. Before adding the ethylamine, I cooled it and the glass funnel down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. If I didn't do this, the ethylamine would evaporate right as I opened the bottle. The ethylamine was added while trying to keep the temperature below 16 degrees Celsius. If it was higher, it would just evaporate and leave the apparatus. Sometimes the temperature got too high though, and I had to stop the addition to let it cool back down. And now I'm nearly finished. I added 6.2 grams of 25% sodium hydroxide solution, let it stand for a few minutes, stirred it for a few minutes, and then I was done. The second step of the reaction is basically the same, but this time you get the end product atrazine. To get rid of the leftover solvents, I ran a vacuum filtration, which was rather tiring. My normal vacuum pump broke, and I had to use this thing. It was tedious, but it was a nice full body workout. The product is still impure, and therefore I am going to stir it while heating with methanol. I put an electric thermocouple into the beaker, because I'm too lazy to set up a reflux. This way, I can keep the temperature below the boiling point of methanol and don't have to worry. I stirred it at 60 degrees Celsius for about an hour. Of course this is not going to get rid of all of the impurities, but it's going to get rid of most. And I am definitely not going to do another vacuum filtration. To get it really pure, you would have to recrystallize from a solvent like acetone. But for me, this should be pure enough. I dried it over in hydrous calcium chloride for a week and then took it out to weigh it and determine the yield. I ended up with 3.4 grams of product and this is a 14.5% yield. The rest likely remained in the methanol, but I already threw it away and therefore can't recover it. I looked it up and apparently atrazine can kill clover, which grows as a wheat here. So I cut out a small piece of plant material out of the ground, moved the grass a little so nobody will complain about random rectangles and put it into a plant pot. I don't want it to die too early, so I got water and watered it. The last step is to add a tiny amount of atrazine to see if it works. You really don't need a lot, as it's extremely potent. The amount I used is probably overkill. To dissolve some and to actually bring it down into the soil, I sprinkled water on it. I watered the plants two times daily, so they don't die early, and for two weeks absolutely nothing happened. Within the next week, the clover started to die. 
Atrazine takes some time to work, but when it does, it does its job very well. I will have to label the dirt as chemical waste and dispose of it this way, because I'm not allowed to throw it away normally. I hope you enjoyed today's video, if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. Lastly, before breaking off the video, I would like to thank all of my Patreons. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. If you want to see your name here too, feel free to check the link in the description.